first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and measure from the center of your wheel up to the top of the fender. Do not use mine because it is jacked up in the air on the other side. Go ahead and remove the small nut down there on the left hand side. Hold the stud on the right hand side as you remove it. It is critical or else it will just sit there and spin. Next step is to loosen your upper sway bar and link, which you can see my 034 here right now. Uh, the hub assembly is a full droop, so it looks kind of weird, but basically loosen that, make sure and get it ready. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and pull the entire end link if you are replacing that. Next thing that you're gonna do is loosen these two, because if you don't get those out, you do not wanna continue on with this job. Uh, be very careful getting these out, use the appropriate tools. Um, you, you can, should just be able to get this one out, honestly, uh, without much hassle, in my opinion. I have 84,000 miles, but I know everybody's car is different. This is a northern car, so it definitely, uh, I thought, would give more issues than it did. Getting this right upper control out, arm out, for me, was the, the tough issue. Next thing you're going to do is loosen those. I believe they're 16 millimeters with an offset box wrench. Uh, that should make your life a little bit easier there, as you can tell. It looks pretty now. Um, and then once you have those two loose, the upper control arms are almost ready. So now you've got the two bolts loose at the top there, right? You've got your pinch bolt out. So now you're gonna support the hub assembly with your jack, and then you're gonna pull this bolt completely out. That's gonna leave the air assembly loose. Now that you've got the hub assembly loose, that means this bolt should be completely out. This arm right here should be completely loose, and this whole thing should be coming out of the top if those four nuts are loose, right? You should feel it wiggle. Now you can pull the nuts on the top side and then pull those bolts. I suggest you use the tool first to knock the studs out. That's critical. The tool will run out of threads. I used the triple square bolts off the bottom splash shield in a pinch. <laughs> and it was able to press it all the way through, so not a lot of banging needed on that. Although I did try it first, the banger method, and it did not work out as well as I wanted, so you can actually see the spot right there where I missed. So anyway, so go ahead and put your ball joints in first, but make sure the arm is seated in the direction that you want first. Like it doesn't need to be perfect, but you definitely want the ball joints to be perfect. Put the ball joints in, torque it to spec. It, they don't really need to be perfectly aligned as far as loaded on the suspension. Those up there definitely need to be loaded. Now, how do we get to the top of the strut tower? So the first thing we're gonna do is take this rubber plastic off right here. You just pretty much pull it back a little bit. It comes out, no big deal. Take it and just lay it down right there. All right, and now this seems really stupid, but you kind of just lift up and pull straight back, right? Pull up, straight back. As you can tell, there's not a lot really holding it in. Probably shouldn't lay it on your carbon fiber intake either. That was dumb. Yeah. So now we have, let me move my hand here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Those are the four that you need to loosen. When I say loosen, I mean pull them all the way up to where the nut is just barely hanging on, right? That's the most important part because that's gonna basically make the entire air assembly free. Uh, once you go to actually pull out the bolts, that's whenever you're going to uh, take these completely off and let the entire air assembly just drop down. And just a side note, uh, for most people that are experiencing popping issues, this one, this one, and that little guy back in there somewhere, and then we have this, 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 and this fun one right here. This one sucks. Uh, make sure your socket is shallow enough to get to it or you'll have to loosen this, loosen that little guy right there, loosen this one right? Because this is a plastic piece just to be able to get to that because if not, that's stiff. You can also go ahead and pull this right here 
You can pull this one right here. That lifts this entire assembly up so you can get to all four of those really easy. I went ahead and loosened uh, these. I know they say to replace them, but eh, whatever. Uh, in the case of this, I, I don't feel like that's necessary. Uh, these, yes, you, you do want to replace these after you use them because whenever you, you torque them, they do lock into place. These just feel like you can unga dunga them and be good to go. So um, this is the panel right here. Use a plastic pry bar to get this off, right? I don't know if I can pull mine straight up, but have fun. It may still be loose. It may not be. Anyway. Uh, you'll see if you pull these panels off on both sides, you have a straight down view to see the upper control arm. And what I mean is that's where you route your strap through to hold it up. Also, when you're putting your seating, your ball joints, it's very much easier to hit an extension with a piece of wood on top of these through this hole. If you have one long enough without having to beat the shit out of the top of your upper control arms or, you know, even worse, just sit here and do this. Cause that's not fun, right? You want to be able to just like, bam, 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 it goes in. Go ahead and now put this bolt and nut back through, but do not tighten it yet. Go ahead and put this nut back on. Use your wrench on the other side to hold the stud in place and secure that first. Go ahead and put your end links back on. Do not tighten them fully yet. You're going to leave them loose, but you need to have them in there. Go ahead and put the nuts and bolts back on. Do not torque the nuts fully yet and make sure you have new hardware. Put the plastic panels back on. Do not put the splash shield up there uh, on yet because you'll still need to get to it. Using the distance that you measured from here all the way up to the fender, you're now going to take your jack and load the suspension that matches the distance before you tighten anything. Now that it's loaded, go ahead and tighten everything to spec. It'll be in the YouTube description. At this point, you should have everything tightened back up, torqued to spec. You should be able to put your splash shield back on and enjoy your new upper control arms. I don't have any more footage of this area because we've run into a bit of rain, and so I just want to go ahead and get this video out. Uh, we have a GoPro and a drone on the way, in addition to some more goodies to help us record, so the next video will be even better. Thank you for liking, and thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, and I will respond.